Good morning. Welcome everyone to the Crescenta Valley United Methodist Church's worship service. It is the second Sunday after Pentecost, June 7th. Today we're going to be celebrating communion with Pastor Paul, so just a heads up, get your juice and your bread or your crackers and your water, whatever you need together to celebrate that with us today. Um, for our announcements this week, um, next week, which is Sunday, June 14th, we'll be honoring our graduates. Um, I po we posted all of their names in the Friday email blast and also in the newsletter that Linda just sent out. So if you'd like to send any of them a card or a gift, um, their addresses are in the directory. If you need an address, please let me know. And for Malika, they have changed their address, so don't use the one in the directory. So next week, please, if you are you have a graduate, I still need all of your pictures and a little information about them. Maybe something that they would be honored for, that they've done, um, something they'd like to bring up or you'd like to bring up, things they might be involved in. Just something so everyone can get to know them a little bit better. We will not be having any youth group today this week. Um, our next one will be June 14th, which will be our graduate Sunday, and we'll be doing something together that day. Next Saturday, June 13th, will be our next Bailey Center Learning Works donation day from 8 to 1 at the church. Please look in your email blast. It shows um, exactly what Learning Works needs in Bailey Center. Maybe this week we could concentrate on Learning Works since we haven't been working with them too long and they're really in need. So I'm going to leave that up to you, but you can um, maybe give to Learning Works this week and only a little bit to Bailey Center. Um, thank you for sending in your offering and your pledges as um, we are still getting them and we really appreciate it. So um, keep sending them in. This has been a very difficult week with the death of George Floyd in my hometown of Minneapolis, which has sparked protests and learning and really looking at ourselves a little closer to what we can all do and what racism means to us. The United Methodist Church has posted um, some information that could be helpful to everybody. And they posted United Methodist Stands Against Racism. Um, you can see it online, um, but I'm going to read a little bit of what they have in here today. We recognize racism as a sin. We commit to challenging unjust systems of power and access. We will work for equal and equitable opportunities in employment and promotion, education and training, in voting, access to public accommodations and housing, to credit loans, venture capital insurance, to positions of leadership and power in all elements of our life together, and to full participation in the church and society. Last week the youth uh, wanted to talk about this. We actually spent our whole time talking about this and their concerns and they always question me as how as adults are we going to be better and how are we going to be? So they give me hope that that generation and the generation around them are going to help make these changes. So we will all be in prayer this week. I will post um, this United Methodist Stand Against Racism on our um, Facebook page. It gives a lot of information about what you can do. There's a book that you can read that um, the bishop has also um, talked about. There's places you can go deeper. We'll also put some other places if you'd like to donate something to some of these causes. So in saying that, I still want us to look at ourselves. Let's lead this week and let's talk about hope, Let's talk about love and how we can all work together to make our world a more equal and just place for all. We'll see you soon.
on this June 7th. So we're, we're grateful for um, a couple days of cool rain, gentle rain, and uh, imagining how it's feeding our roots for growth. Besides that, we have had disruptions in our, our lives with sheltering in place and social unrest. And I was very um, encouraged to be part of protests. There have been many in our neighborhood, um, in La Cañada, La Crescenta, Montrose, and to see young people organizing, leading, being respectful to police who were respectfully directing traffic, keeping the whole thing safe without incident. So it is encouraging uh, to see young people uh, speaking up and participating. On other fronts, we are grateful for, um, for some healing that's going on as some things are opening up, reopening uh, with caution and glad to hear that Betty will be able to have her surgery the beginning of next month. Grateful for some healing that has happened among um, other humans and animals near and dear to us. We pray for those who are discouraging, working to discourage disease that is um, in their bodies, their hearts and minds, and encouraging healing and health. So we pray for my nephew Peter, we pray for Wayne, pray for those who are imprisoned by despair or imprisoned by injustice and maybe both. Pray for mercy to take hold, for goodness to uh, overcome evil. Our special music today to um, help shape and lift our prayers comes from a jazz musician that Barb knows. She's world renowned jazz singer Carmen Bradford and she lives locally and gave us permission to hear her sing this a cappella version of Lift Every Voice and Sing which is um, sometimes referred to as the Black National Anthem. So, I hope we can listen to it as closely as, as she sang it. Uh, no one is free until everyone is free. And so we must all lift our voices to help bring that about. She um, sings the words about the way being watered with tears, with the blood of slaughter. We're seeing echoes, hearing echoes of that these days 
and we will until we change and to change we must all lift our voices so let us lift our prayers together let us pray that all will eventually lift them and the heavens will ring with the harmony of liberty. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun for a new day begun let us march on till victory is won. And now, let us be in an attitude of prayer and silent meditation. Dear God, as we come to you this day in prayer, may we learn to see and hear your spirit moving us. As you heard the prayers of the people at Pentecost, may you listen now to those who call upon you. Move us to praise your gracious will for in Christ Jesus, you have saved us and opened for us the hidden ways of your love. Today, we lift up the prayers of our hearts for those seeking healing and for those with needs within the church and the world. Hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbors with one another. As a God of mercy and healing who hears the cries of those in need, receive these petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know your peace, may know your comfort, and may from you receive courage. And finally, as you delighted in embracing Jesus as the Christ, bless each and every one of us as we partake of the bread and the cup this day. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson for the morning comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. Finally, all of you having unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind, do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. The word of God for the people of God. As Christians in United Methodists, would it be fair to say that we are pretty much familiar with what a blessing is? You know, as a pastor, I have been called upon to give a blessing for various occasions a number of times. We ask God to bless certain things. And by doing that, we hope that some good will come from it. If it is an object, that object will fulfill its purpose. If it is a person, then we hope that they will succeed, have a joyful life, and be fulfilled. As a minister, I have administered a lot of blessings in my life. I have blessed thousands of marriages. I have blessed vehicles. I have blessed new buildings, new businesses. I have blessed homes for people. I have blessed people going on a journey. I bless meals all the time. And in our book of worship, I have used a ritual for the blessing of animals. All these blessings are formalized acts of the church. They are liturgical acts through which we pray that God will prosper the object or the person bringing to them happiness or success and joy into their lives. But in our lesson for this morning, from the letter of Peter, the word used there is that we are to be a blessing. We are not to return evil for evil, but on the contrary, to bless. For this you have been called, that you may obtain a blessing. The passage has reference to Jesus' teaching of not returning evil for evil, but to be good to those who do not like you. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, paraphrased it this way. Bless those that persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. And that is our calling as Christians, to bless and not to curse. And why? Because we are all made in the image of God. And here we learn that we can be a blessing. The writer lists these things. Have unity of spirit, sympathy and love of everyone. And then these two phrases, a tender heart and a humble mind. It is those last two qualities I want to address this morning. A tender heart and a humble mind. I'm certain that if we can gain those two, then we will be a blessing to everybody. First, a tender heart. The word can also mean compassionate. It is the capacity to feel what other people are feeling to put yourself in another person's place, to get inside another person's life so that you know 
what they are going through. That is what it means to be tender-hearted. And if we need a model of what it means to be tender-hearted, let us look at our Lord. Our Lord looked at what was inside of everybody, and it was the image of God. Our Lord did not regard the external reality of anybody's life. Jesus saw not only the way people are now, but Jesus looked on what we can become. And Jesus treated people with the potential he saw in them. Jesus came to tell us who we are, not only with his words, but with his deeds of tender compassion. And that is how we are supposed to be, to be tender-hearted and thus to be a blessing. The second characteristic Peter lifts up is a humble mind. This is what Paul wrote to the Philippians. Have this mind in you, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, humbled himself, took on the form of a servant, took on the flesh to be with us. Have this mind in you, a humble mind, which you saw in Christ, which means that if you seek to follow Christ, you will seek to humble the way Christ was humbled, who manifested humility by identifying with us, becoming like us, feeling our pain and our sorrow, even to the extent of taking our place, bearing the cross for us. Many of you are familiar with the writings, the work, and the ministry of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German pastor and theologian who opposed Hitler and joined the resistance against Hitler in Germany and was arrested, imprisoned, and executed in Flossenburg concentration camp. In his short life, Bonhoeffer produced some of the most helpful tools in Christian ethics, and here is one of them. He made the distinction between the ultimate and the penultimate. The ultimate is the last, the final state of history, the kingdom of God. The penultimate is the next to last. When the ultimate comes, we're going to have all of the answers. It is like what the Apostle Paul wrote in Corinthians, then we will see clearly. That is the way it is going to be in the ultimate. But we're not there yet. And Bonhoeffer said, it is the temptations of Christians to approach other people as if we were there, to think that everything is clear to them and that there are easy answers to hard questions. You know, there are those who do that, who go into situations where people are suffering and then they may, maybe with good intentions, but they give easy, glib answers to the hard questions of life. They are the people who tell people who are suffering that it is God's will that this terrible thing has happened. To be a Christian means to have a humble mind. It means to realize that this is not the ultimate time. This is not the time when everything is clear to everybody when there is no more pain and sorrow. This is not the time when all tears are wiped away. This is the penultimate time. This is the time before the end when we do not see all things clearly. There are hard questions, questions 
for which there were no answers. Pain which doesn't make any sense at all. Terrible things that happen in our lives that we don't understand. That is what it is like to live in the penultimate time, in the time before the kingdom comes. Jesus did not come to give us pat answers. Jesus came to give us himself. And Bonhoeffer says that that is what it means to live in the penultimate as a Christian, to live in it the way Jesus did. It means that we are going to join others in their suffering, to try and understand what other people have to put up with in their lives. How do we do this? Maybe visit them in the hospital, or write a note, or make a phone call, you really don't have to say anything. Religious slogans so often reveal the distance between you and that person who is suffering. You may think that you have all the answers. You may think that you've got it all together now. But to one who is suffering, those easy answers indicate sometimes how insensitive we are might be to immediate human need. It has been said that what suffering people understand are not answers, but presence, being with them. They understand you leaving the safe world of certainty and dwelling where the sufferer lives, the way that Jesus did, who did not count his equality with God, a thing to be grasped, but humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. Now, as we prepare to partake of our Lord's Supper, I invite you to remember the words as we consecrate these elements that are before us of the bread and the cup. Let us remember that after Jesus had partaken of the Passover meal, he took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat in memory of my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, Drink this in memory of my blood shed for you. And may these elements of the bread and cup nourish your bodies and souls into life everlasting. Amen. I now invite you to take your bread that is before you. As we break the bread in front of us, let us remember that the body of Christ broken for you.
and placing it into the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. And now, let us be in an attitude of prayer. O Spirit of God, as we have come together for worship this day, we thank you for these gifts and these elements of the bread and cup that we have partaken of this day, remembering of the love of Christ for each and every one of us. And as we have taken and eaten of the bread, and had the cup before us. May each of our lives be filled with God's grace and that may these elements nourish our bodies and souls into life everlasting. Amen. And now as we go forth into this new day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>